Hello everyone, hope you're having a good day. I'm going to walk into the steps I figured out to set up a PAL World server on a, er, PAL World dedicated server on a Linux system. Yeah. Sentences. So, the first thing is you'll have to have four cores recommended, one hundred or 16 gigabytes of RAM, the server. Container. How oh, temp, I'll call it. Password. Lame. Sorry. Password one. Password one. It's not like I need this to be a decent password. But let's put it on mausoleum 2 because I've cleared it out just for this purpose because it does take up most of the RAM on one of these things so if I want my other stuff to continue to function Ubuntu give it let's see how much physical space does it say Nothing about the actual physical space. So I'm going to put 50, just because that seems like a solid amount. CPU, four cores. Memory, 1024 times 8. Give it a gig of swap space. Start after creation. So, what I'm doing right now is just creating a container in Proxmox. Ubuntu 23.10 is what it said. Anyway, one of the later releases of Ubuntu. Because you need a base to install it on, right? This is for Linux. That, you can find a lot, like an EC2 instance on Amazon, or a Linode instance, or there's a lot of web servers you can get that are Linux. Here's our nice little summary page. Got the resources. All right, console. Now, one thing I always find useful and good to do is app update dash y and app upgrade dash y and app auto remove dash y. The first part, update, checks the repository list, sees what you can update. Upgrade actually continues that and upgrades it. Because, yes, those are two different things. Auto remove finds any no longer related to anything packages and removes them. Enter. Having a basic Ubuntu 23.10 container that is currently up to date. None of the packages or selling will need, just the platform for the server itself. And this is just a container, so it might be even longer if you do a VM. But I like containers better. We've given it what we could. We're not doing the Windows install. We're doing this Linux install, which uses Steam CMD. So, because we're on Linux, first thing to do is stopping the root user. That's a security thing. The root user is God. If the root user says do something, the server does it. 
So if you potentially downloaded something malicious from Steam and you were running as the root user, that could be a problem. Or even if it's not malicious intentionally, it could become malicious by trying to take up uh, more authority than it should otherwise have because root overrides things. So if X process is running as not root and then your Steam CMD is running as root and this is important -er than your game and the game says, fuck you, give me your shit. Uh, well, there we go. Root wins. By the power of copy-paste. That didn't work. By the power of copy-paste. Pseudo, which is super user do. Add user. Dash M, which is... Like, we do need to be... We don't need to use sudo because I'm currently root. Add user. Steam. Again, we're just going to use some janky password because this is not going to survive. Pass the tutorial. Doesn't need a name or information. Yes, it's correct, even though it's blank. All right. Now we do need to user mod dash ag for add to group pseudo steam because. We will need to use sudo as the Steam user in order to install these packages. And I'm going to use change shell because I am kind of masochistic, but not masochistic enough to use the default shell. Now I just need to remember the order that this goes in. I did not get the order correct. Change shell, dash shell, then bash, user, steam. There we go. Now, pass you to the steam user. Go to the steam home directory. The steam user home directory. And, because this is a container, there is one more step that is not in this tutorial. Well, by this tutorial, I mean the Steam CMD tutorial. See how it says, sudo add repository multiverse. Well, um, the add repository command is not here by default. So, we need to install that. Now, if you're not using container or using like a more full, robust version of Ubuntu, you probably won't need to run this command. This is only if you don't have the add repository command already. Software common properties contains a lot more than just the add app repository command, but that's the one we need from this. So this is the easy way to get it. Again, this is a container. It's not that big of a deal if it's a little more space. Sure, you could probably find a way to install just the add app repository command and its associated things that it needs to run, but I don't really think that's worth covering right now. So I'm not going to. All right, so now we run the command as foretold by this Ubuntu section. This would be different if you're running Debian. This would be different if you're running Arch. Because, well, Arch, you kind of have to like install or Gen 2 or Docker or manually install it if you're some sort of psychopath like I am. But I'm not doing that this time because this tutorial is for the less... Crazy people out there. Still pretty crazy. Crazy enough to run your own Ubuntu server to run, well, Ubuntu container to run a PAL world server. And keep in mind, this will work for a while. And the computer it's currently running on was less than $200. It's a Dell 660S 
that I dug out of a trash can for free and then spent about $50 upgrading the RAM and the processor. So, get yourself a trash can server today. Oh, it's done while I was rambling. Cool. It added all of those things. It added the repository called the multiverse, and it added an architecture, which is the i386, and it then updated the repository information. Because once we add the repository multiverse, that doesn't mean the system has gone and looked at what's in that repository yet. Hence the pseudo apt update. Now we sudo apt install CMD. And then once we have CM, uh, Steam CMD installed, we'll just go back over to the PAL world description where it has the rest of the tutorial. It's really to run a PAL world, you got like three steps you need to go through. You need to have the server and operating system you're going to put it on. You need to install Steam CMD, and then you need to install the server itself, which is actually like the easiest part. There's one little tweak you have to make that I don't see in much documentation until I hit the Arch Linux forums, but it's not a big deal. Explain this command. Steam plus login anonymous plus apt update plus validate plus quit. Steam CMD is like a terminal in and of itself. So you'd run Steam CMD, then you'd run login, then you'd run update with validate, and then you'd run quit. Every command of Steam C and D is a plus here. So basically, in one line, you're telling it to launch Steam C and D, run a command. That command is denoted with a plus symbol. Then the arguments for the command follow that, like login anonymous. Then apt update. This number is the number of PAL world. As far as Steam is concerned, that's the server. Uh, that's the dedicated server number thing. Not sure what else to call it. And then there's also the validate flag for update, which basically means double check your work, kids. And then quit, which means leave the C uh, the Steam CMD. This makes it all in one. Isn't that neat? Failed to load file public Steam to English. Alright, so apparently my Steam cannot speak English. I don't know. I saw that last time too that I did this, and it doesn't seem to matter. Like at all. You will see several errors in this that don't actually matter, and I'm not entirely sure why they appear. Every time I looked them up, the answer from the forums was, don't worry about it. So... And unless you want to log in with your Steam account and password, that's why you lose use Login Anonymous. So you can host one of these servers without a Steam account. You, like I didn't log in off screen, off stream, before stream, whatever. You don't need Steam to run this, which is a thing, I guess. Now, I mean, you can't play the game unless you buy a copy of the game. This is just setting up a server for you to all, you and all your friends to connect to. Which port forwarding is a thing you'll need to do. But I haven't quite figured out how to show you guys port forwarding setups without accidentally exposing all of my information. 
live? I don't know how to, I don't know, live blur things, if you will. All right. We currently made it to the app update, which is also the install command. Mm-hmm. Just their way of doing it. Halfway through the initial download, we haven't gotten to the validate yet. All right, we have now successfully installed and validated the app. All you missed was more white text going across the screen. Downloading, finished, verify, update. Now, do, 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 do. we need to go to the Steam subfolder to the PAL server. LS. LS A to show everything. Steam installed from the Steam CMD as it stands is installed as a hidden server. Or not hidden server, hidden folder. Which is why you didn't see it when I did LS, but you do see it when I did LS L. Hey, list. And then I think it's like list all or something like that. L, uh, the L is. That, okay. LS L. It would show it in kind of a list format. LS-A shows all things, but see how it's displayed differently. So LS-LA is the way I prefer to you do it, because it shows you a lot more information, a lot cleaner. It's got the various columns. But what we need to do is, from where we are now, Steam. So dot steam since it's a hidden folder slash steam slash steam apps slash common and since I only have one double tapping tab just auto completes to pal server and pal server is pal server dot sh now this will not work. So why did I do it if it will not work? Well, you see how it says home steam dot steam sdk64 steam client dot so cannot be found. That's because it doesn't exist there. I'm not sure why it's looking there for it, but it is, and it doesn't exist. So what we need to do is Make that folder. Sorry, this is the danger of copy pasting. If we're not doing it under root, we're doing it under the home directory. And the home directory, home, steam, can also just be filled in with this little little tilde symbol. So now if we ls dash la dot theme, see how there's SDK64? It exists now. Now that that folder exists, that theme client dot so, it exists, but it exists somewhere else. And I'm not sure why it's looking in one place when it's really somewhere else. So Instead of copying and pasting it or moving it or anything like that, I'm going to do what's called a symbolic link. So anytime a file says, hey, look at home directory dot steam SDK 64, it'll be automatically rerouted to the right place. Now, let me double check where the right place is. I want to say it's dot steam, steam, steam. The right place is dot steam for the hidden folder. In the steam folder, in the steam CMD folder, there is steam.
sorry, there is Linux 64, which contains the Steam client at uh, dot .so. That thing that couldn't be found because it's looking in here for some reason for what's, you know, sitting over here. I didn't design this. I don't, I don't know. So, I'm going to create the symbolic link with link dash s for symbolic. And do it to Steam SDK 64. So now it'll work. And for future proofing, you can also do SDK32. Why? In case you want to do something 32 bit. Pal World 64. Moving on. But now that we've made that link, you could also copy and paste the file into the directory. You could also move it. You could all, like, there are other ways. It just needs to be in the place it's currently looking for it. Now, in case Pal World updates at some point and starts looking in the, I guess we'll call it the right directory, the one that's there by default without me having to do anything, that's why I'm making it a symbolic link. That way, there's no duplicate files, and there's no uh, looking for it in the right place, only for it to not be there. If I'm not making any sense, feel free to ask any questions in chat. Yes. Now, slash home, slash steam, slash dot steam, slash steam, slash steam, slash steam apps, slash palman, slash pal world, slash pal world server dot sh. And it should run. See, it says to make it, oh, yeah. They say to copy it. I went slightly different. And now I, at home, having access to the lab network, could go to the server's IP address and log in. So, it's working now. But I don't want it to be working now, so I'm just going to kill it. Common PAL server default. Several layers back. This configuration file is a sample of the default server settings. To change this file will not be reflected on the server. To change the server settings, modify, you know, that link we just went to. And then, oh boy. Difficulty, daytime, speed, rate, file capture, blah, blah, a lot of information. Here's an easier way to read it. Difficulty, difficulty setting. Daytime, daytime speed, speed rate, apparent, uh, capture rate, basically any little knob you want to tweak for your own custom server. You could do a Dark Souls-based server and have damage to the player multiplier at like 100, and so you always get one shot no matter what, and just be like, get good, scrub. I do not recommend this. You could try and make it more realistic by setting the day speed and the night speed to reflect our real world day and night cycles. Same thing for like the hunger depletion rate. Make it so you only have to eat like three times a day as per normal. Do a hardcore and turn it to zero. Or turn, sorry, different thing. Player auto HP regeneration just turn to zero. You can just turn off all the auto region. Which is neat. Death penalties, which comes with specific options. None, items, items and equipment, everything. Set the max players to a guild, the time it takes to incubate, the name of your server, server description, the thing I'm looking for. Admin password. Why? Here's admin-only options. If 
you want to use these commands, you need to set up admin password and get permissions for administrator with the slash admin password command. Because, you know, I'm going to be administering the server, so that would be nice. So, what am I going to do? I'm going to go back here. I'm going to exit. And instead of nano, I'm going to do copy this file. I'm going to home, steam, hidden steam, more steam, steam, steam apps. Common, pal, pal, save, config, Linux server, pal, world settings. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy the default settings into the world settings. See, it's here now. To change the server settings, modify the server in this location, and then run that script update. Or that script is, no, that script's not commented out. That's part of it. Anyway, player damage rate defense, player stomach decrease rates, I really don't like how this reads because it's one really big line. Hold on, let me go back to the guide. Also, line breaks are not allowed in the middle of a line. Damn it. <laughs> and note the parameters may change in future updates. So the default one of this was blank and we just copied the default settings over. So we have the defaults. Don't need that anymore. Here's the other thing. Improves performance in multi-threaded CPU environments. To a maximum of four threads. So, now you've seen how to up install it. How to get it to run correctly. How to update the world settings. And now we're going to try launching it with these advanced flags and see what happens. You know, this might have been a bad experiment because you guys can't actually. See anything? You know what resources? Let's go ahead and give you a fifth core. <laughs> Since we're only putting four towards the container, or only four towards the file world, user, use preferred threads, no asynchronous. Load thread, use multiple threads for DS. And this is the advanced options. Doesn't really give me anything to let me know if that succeeded. So, I'm going to try pulling up this PAL world server. And we'll see what it looks like. But first, I need to know what the fuck IP this is. We'll see. IPA. Local network shits. Hell World launching. Our world launching on the wrong screen.
joint multiplayer game. 10.0.15.20.f. Next. Hey, it's running! Confirm. Again, this is gonna get deleted in like a second. So, we've set it with all of these additional performance flags. Remove that. 106. Purge up. Destroy, uh, destroy data. Blah, blah, blah. We don't need you anymore, 106. Battle World CT 000. As you can see, they've been playing for like a week? Maybe? Half? No, hardly half a week. It came out Saturday. Saturday. And we are running out of the. Sure, you could technically start with 8 gigs. Now, ETC system. D system how world server dot service let's try expanding the working there we go all right so I had narrowed down the working directory too much, and uh, it didn't know where to find things. That's a thing that happens. That also reminds me I forgot to do something. Stop. Nano. All these flags. Copy. Paste. Now we're good. Now start. Now status. Oh. I don't know if that's a sheer coincidence or if uh, it's actually running faster with those flags. Hey! Everything's still here! Nothing's on fire! We have a little bit of pain as everything loads in. And remember, this thing's running right next to, uh, the server's like right next to me, but I still have to go out to the internet and then back in this direction because I have set up to be accessible from the exterior net, so... Yep. The hope, though, that... Oh, yeah. No, we are using way more CPU than when I normally run this thing. So those flags are definitely having an effect. Let's see... I get the CPU usage before today. Alright, so yeah. See, about 26% CPU usage before the use of the flags, because this was back on Tuesday, January 23rd, so this was yesterday. Now we're hovering around 40% usage, 38% usage. So we are getting more system usage from our CPU. So again, the flags are actually doing something. Now hopefully that translates to better performance for our server, which I can now leave up and running. Now, to make things more unnecessarily complicated. 
console. Now what we want to do is enable. So now this will run when the container starts up. So reboot the container, it starts up. So now, why might I want that, mind you? Because servers go down for maintenance occasionally. Why don't we automate that? Remember in the setup step where we went wrong step? In the setup where we ran this? Remember, update is to install, but update is also to update. So what if we made a little bash script that will be called by our, uh, what's the word? Cron system, which I have never explained cron on stream. I've just now realized. Uh, okay, quick version. Cron is, I want to do something at the same time all the time. Once a week, once a month, once a year, every day at 2.31 p.m., that kind of stuff. Cron. The chronological time words. That. So if I want to run on something on a regular basis. So copy. I'm going to make new how world update dot sh. Nano then. So what I want to do is pseudo system or system ctl dot how world server dot service that should stop it right bring the server down paste we'll do steam cmd to download the update and then we will system ctl Pal world server dot service. Exit. Yes. Change mod. Plus X to make it executable. Now let's see what happens when I try and run it. It could explode. We'll find out. So far, so good. Oh, that was updating Steam CMD. We haven't even gotten to the point of updating. All right. Connecting anonymously, wait for client config, waiting for user info. It seems to be working quite fine. Now, I probably can't log into the server at this moment, but, you know, if I set it for weekly update, monthly update, what have you, well, as I'm not a, I mean, I guess I could do nightly updates even. It's not like our server is under heavy load. Right now. Goes down every night at midnight for, what's this going to take? Maybe five minutes? Now the question comes. Do, 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 do. Man, there it is. How to execute commands. Must be done within the game or RC con. The RC con. What the hell is that? That's what I want. Because I'm willing to bet that that is a sort of external connection I can use for scripting. That way, when I implement this script, I can start a little countdown that'll say, 
In uh, one hour, server will go down for maintenance. That'll say in 30 minutes, server will go down for maintenance. That kind of thing. But since I'm not currently aware of how to do that, we will save that for another stream. Successfully! Fully installed. Now, system, CTL, status. Five milliseconds to initialize. Right. Because for now, the link to this server is a secret secret, but only for those in the Discord server. And here we are. It's up and running. <laughs> 